Hello guys, good morning um, from Switzerland. It's morning coffee. Uh, terrible weather today outside, so I decided to stay home uh, and woke up to this. <laughs> right? Quite a dramatic drop in Bitcoin price uh, this night. Um, and obviously that was, you know, from 57 down to at some point 42. It's very low. Uh, it's around 30% drop. Uh, quite dramatic. Uh, so the question is always what happened because we didn't have any like terrible news or like there is actually no event right uh, in the market in terms of like fundamental change or somebody prohibiting Bitcoin somewhere or some <laughs> like you know the normal as a news that triggers the price down. So um, we looked a little bit around, so if you look at different um, data sources, around 4,000 Bitcoins were uh, sold in a quite short period of time uh, on several venues. And, uh, well, you know, if such an amount of Bitcoins like counted 4,000 at the price of around 50-55, that is 250 million uh, dollars, right? So that was um, the, the, you know, the portion that was uh, liquidated. So that normally if like you want to sell it because you think the bull run is over, you would find the way to do that without such a price drop, right? Because there are so many exchanges, so many liquidity places, there are huge OTC markets. So you don't have to do it this way, right? And take the losses. So obviously whoever um, is selling, you know, um, is doing this with the goal to move the market down. Um, and obviously, you know, what happens in such circumstances, because we have now uh, big exchanges with um, a lot of leveraged positions, um, whereas some of them are closed on the weekend, right? And now it's a Saturday. This is quite, quite typical move. Um, so what you see is, you know, that the liquidations were triggered. Um, so if, if this amount of Bitcoin sold was at 250 million, then you see within the last 24 hours, 2.5 billion um, leveraged position derivatives were liquidated, right? Mostly, of course, Bitcoin, Ether, and in the remainder of large coins, they, they move all in parallel when such a strong market move comes. So. <laughs> so obviously, you know, um, the goal of, you know, this market strategy here is not to get out and take profits, but, uh, you know, to move the market down. And the question is, of course, um, is, is this all? This is the bottom? Uh, will it go deeper down or will it stabilize? Well, there's, a, you know, the other part of the players. So all on the weekends, so the, um, you know, uh, futures, markets, uh, and, and all the, you know, Wall Street uh, players uh, are currently not participating, so we will see how the Monday goes. Um, it's just, for me, it looks like, you know, um, again, you know, some people uh, and players, hedge funds and so on, uh, preparing for the second part or continuation of the bull run on the way there. They push the price down, it goes down through leverage, it goes even further down. This is a way for a lot of players to buy back and realize quite a good profits. Well, the difference between, you know, what is going on here and what you see uh, on the Wall Street is that we have much more data, right? We have on-chain data. We see how the coins move on the blockchain, what goes off exchanges, on exchanges, what is happening directly on the blockchain. And, and this, um, all of this happening is much more transparent, um, even for, you know, outsiders, so to say, right? And, and this, is, this is what I really like about Bitcoin, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, the game for some and uh, some can get rich and, uh, and the rest of us has no idea what's going on. This is much more transparent and, and interesting, um, you know, opportunity to uh, invest, trade. But of course, as always, trade just 1% of your net, uh, of your net um, investments. Uh, this is a highly risky um, investment class um, 
if you do it right with 1%, you will probably generate profits bigger than with all your shares and, and bonds with the rest of your 9 or 90%. If you lose 1%, maybe it's not that bad. But of course, all of this is my uh, personal strategy and my approach. This is not a financial advice. Um, and yeah, well, with that, the last note, uh, the day before yesterday, um, Jack Dorsey, I'm a big fan of Jack Dorsey. I, I love this guy. He's, he's truly, truly amazing. So he left, by the way, this is the founder of Twitter and Square. So he left uh, Twitter. He announced that he's stepping out of, uh, out of um, his position with Twitter. And he's now joining full-time leading Square, which he's renaming in Block, <laughs> which is, you know, his big, uh, alongside his big commitment to cryptocurrencies. And well, I think it's not surprising to a lot of people because look how how well this went for um, for uh, Square, right? Square was one of the first uh, companies moving into crypto through the Cash app, right? So they enabled simple buy and sell through the app uh, to all of their customers. And uh, it was a very successful strategy. It was, was basically one of the first fintechs uh, in the space moving into crypto, not just with their app and enabling users to buy crypto, but also as the biggest buyer of crypto, right? They bought for 250 million uh, Bitcoin and then added more on the top. Um, so for me, this is this is exciting news. Uh, it's actually super bullish and I'm very happy for Square and for Jack Dorsey and uh, happy to see them at the next conference as well.